Hey everyone, it's February 19th, and that means that if today's your birthday, you share it with serial killer Stephen Peter Morin, who had many aliases, including one of just simply Constantine, a much cooler name than any nickname I've ever had, and that's him right up there. Morin was born in Rhode Island in 1951 and found trouble early in life. A teenage dropout, he already had a drug habit at the age of 15 when he was arrested for Grand Theft Auto, serving two years behind bars for his actions. When he was released, he bounced around the country, being arrested multiple times, including for possession of LSD and another car theft. Morin eventually headed west, settling in San Francisco in 1976, changing his name and finding employment as a mechanic. But rather than start anew, he continued his old ways, being arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia. His crimes became violent that year, when he abducted, raped, and tortured a 14-year-old girl, landing him on the FBI's most wanted list where he remained for the rest of his life. It is believed that he began murdering young women at about this time as well, but his constantly changing identity and frequent moves make it difficult to know exactly how many victims he had and when it started. To dodge the authorities, he went to the library to search through birth records of men about his age, obtained their birth certificates to use as future identities. In 1980, his first confirmed kill occurred when he abducted and murdered a 19-year-old woman. Six months later, he killed an ex-girlfriend, then, wearing a disguise and using a new name, stalked her friend. Your terrible ex ain't got nothing on Stephen Morin. He fled the area when the police became suspicious of his actions and spent time in Louisiana, upstate New York, and Colorado, meeting a woman in Buffalo he convinced to sell her business so the two could travel the country together. What his new partner didn't know is that he was murdering women along the way, and she dumped him when he gave too much attention to a woman they met on their travels. He found a new girlfriend, this time confiding in her that he was a killer, and she decided to go along with it. Maybe it's just me, that's a pretty big red flag. They murdered a young woman and abducted another in San Antonio. Luckily for her, the police arrived when Warren wasn't at the motel where she was being kept, and his accomplice was apprehended. He abducted a girl who convinced him to read the Bible with her, and after 10 hours of Bible study, he let her go. Two weeks later, Warren was finally arrested at a bus stop in Austin without incident. When his actions were finally accounted for, Morin was accused of 48 murders across 11 states. He pleaded guilty to capital murder in Texas, an extremely rare occurrence, and was sent to death row. Because he was already sentenced to death, trials weren't held in the vast majority of murders he is believed to have committed, so he's only convicted of four. His heavy intravenous drug use has colla had collapsed most of his veins, so when he was set to be executed in 1985, it took nearly 45 minutes to find a vein that could be used. Morin had become a born-again Christian by this time, and his final words were, Father, forgive these people, for they know not what they do. Forgive them as you have forgiven me, and I have forgiven them. Lord Jesus, I commit my soul to you. If this was your birthday, hope you had a great day. If you know somebody whose birthday it is today, send them this video so they can find out all about their birthday twin. And to Stephen Peter Morin, I have to say... Happy birthday, you bastard.